so we see translational equilibrium and rotational equilibrium So condition for translation equilibrium is sum of all the forces must be zero and sum of all the torque is zero. So now the next thing comes is that uh, your forces will be in uh, bring the forces along x-axis and y-axis if they are and if they are not then you can resolve their components along x-axis and y-axis. So this is the sign convention for the force. So if it is in this direction, negative x, this direction, negative y. Now, what about this uh, direction of the rotational, I mean, uh, direction of the torque. So if it is uh, in anti-clockwise direction, we'll take the, if the moment is in anti-clockwise direction, we take it as a uh, positive. So, that's the sign convention. Now see, this is the point where force is applied and this is uh, where we are taking the moments about. So axis is over here. This is the axis of rotation. Considering it as uh, axis of rotation passes through C uh, perpendicular to this plane. So torque is equals to R cross F and the magnitude of torque is equals to rf sin theta and that we can write at as fr perpendicular so this direction is your r uh, this is your r vector r position from the axis to the point where force is applied so this is r now this r cross f so r to f so you can see that this direction is uh, opposite to this this clockwise so it will be negative and this direction which is clockwise so, so let us take the r here this is the direction of r from axis to the point of application of the force so this is your r so r cross f so r to f and this direction is clockwise you can see and clock uh, sorry anti clockwise so we take anti clockwise direction as positive now even if you don't look uh, uh, means r cross f very simple way also see the moments uh, the torque acting at we have only suppose three points a b c or there can be any point over here also force can be anywhere on this rod right force acting not in not on this rod we are not considering so force can be anywhere in this rod so either the force will be in uh, means downward direction or the force will be in upward direction okay now if you look here uh, this is your axis. So if you apply the force anywhere between C and F downward at any point, of course it will bring this uh, B down. Yes. So that's the, you know, means direction of rotation. And if there is any point between C and B where the force is applied upward, so it will take it upward. It will rotate it upward. Now any point between C and A, downward force. So the moments will be, of course it will bring, this, this force even will bring this, this down and will rotation will be in this direction. And if the force are upward between C and A anywhere, so of course they are going to rotate in this direction. So it's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, just looking at the figure you can tell the direction of rotation okay the direction of rotation is anti-clockwise you are taking it as positive and if it is clockwise you are taking it as negative so this is what the concept is now we have the force in this figure which are so this are line of action so we take the perpendicular distance between axis and line of action so here this this you are taking the moments about c so this is your vector r this distance is a with the action so r cross f or you yourself see that if there is any force here between c and a it will bring it down 
So here you can see that these uh, these torques were equal and opposite, and they were cancelling out each other. So there was a rotational equilibrium, but the net forces both were down. So there was no rotational equilibrium in this case. So net force acting on it is 2F in the downward direction. Let us look at this case. So here we have uh, the net forces. So this, if they are, we are taking this direction as positive, so then this direction is negative, downward direction. So plus F minus F. So sum of forces, let us find sum of forces. So that is equals to plus F and minus F and that is equals to zero. So it means there is a translational equilibrium. Now any uh, so mm, now look at the let us check rotational equilibrium. So this force will bring this down and here for force at B this will be your R this direction of R, so R cross F, this direction, you can simply without even R cross F, you can see that this force will rotate this rod in this direction. So, so this direction is uh, anti-clockwise positive and this direction is also anti-clockwise. So this direction is also positive, so both the tau are positive. And tau here is uh, plus AF, so net tau is equals to F into R perpendicular, so this already, you know, this is perpendicular distance, this A. So a plus AF and plus AF, that is equals to 2 AF, that is the net torque acting on this, so this is a very important equation. Now um, so this kind of situation where we have a pair of forces, uh, their magnitude is equal, look here they are cancelling out each other but acting in opposite direction so that's why they are cancelling each other with different lines of action so line of action must be different with the, and then we call these pair of forces as couple or torque so they are forming a couple these pair of equal and opposite forces and a couple means couple means a pair of forces so a pair of forces which are of equal magnitude but acting in opposite direction with different line of action. That pair of forces produce rotation without translation. You can see that there, there is no, uh, uh, no translational motion. There is translation equilibrium, so no translation motion. And there is a rotational motion. Okay, now uh, the examples of pair of forces, uh, we call them couple, like you are opening this lid, so you are applying the force in this direction and here in this direction. So, so equal and opposite here also, the earth's magnetic field creates equal and opposite force on the poles of the compass needle, so these are the two forces which are equal and opposite, you can see their line of action. and. So here if you want to find out R, what will be your R? This is uh, uh, this is your R, but what is R perpendicular? So R perpendicular is the uh, distance between this axis of rotation and the line of uh, uh, the point where force is applied. So this is the point where force applied, so this, so this is the, so the distance here is, that is, uh, you can call it A or R, whatever it is. So, uh, this perpendicular distance is the line of action. You have to draw a perpendicular from this point on the line of action. This is your axis of rotation. So, that's uh, uh, what is our perpendicular. So, our perpendicular will be this is your axis of rotation. So, here axis of rotation uh, to line of action, 90 degree. So here this will be 90 degree over here, somewhere. So this are, are perpendicular here, and similarly perpendicular here. So this is your 
are perpendicular distance so you are multiplying so the net torque acting over here is net torque is 2 into r perpendicular into f okay and this r perpendicular you know that this is nothing but this is 2 r sin theta into f very important concept now <clears throat> then we did uh, this liver example of liver so here I have load and I want to pick this load so you have to decide where you have you want to take the moments about where is the ro x of rotation so I'm considering the x of rotation over here passing through perpendicularly to this rod now any force will definitely going to rotate it in clockwise directions clockwise direction is negative and any force over here in this direction will move it anti-clockwise so this direction is positive so so anti-clockwise directions moment are supposed to be taken as positive and clockwise negative and what about the moments at r moments at r is always uh, zero why because uh, tau is equals to rf and r is r perpendicular to f and this r is zero over here so now in case of uh, lever force f1 so we want to lift some load over here so this distance is load distance load arm we can say and here we are putting the effort at b to pick it up so that's effort arm and uh, let us uh, write the equation for the net torque so you can see that it is in equilibrium it is given that this lever is in equilibrium so so equilibrium so it means the um, net force is al also zero net torque is also zero net force you can see that these two forces are downward f1 f2 we take them negative and this upward direction due to some support over here this there is some support so then that is reaction r so r is positive and f1 and f2 are negative so this net is zero and this torque torque due to f1 so this distance d1 into f1 and we'll take it positive and this we are taking it negative so d1 f1 is equals to d2 f2 so in this equation means this d1 distance on this side and f1 is actually your mg the load is m so this is uh, load into load arm and this is uh, effort into effort arm so this expression is principle of moments of a lever now we have uh, the ratio so bring this uh, f to this side and even this side we call this mechanical advantage so you want this f1 to be greater than f2 because you want to pick more load than the effort you are putting so this must be greater than one when this is greater than one it means small effort can be used to lift a large load now center of gravity so center of mass is a point where uh, the force is we assume it to be applied and then we study the, the acceleration of the center of mass so where the whole force is applied and what is center of gravity center of gravity is a point where whole gravitational force is applied so this is a point 
uh, we assume that whole mass is concentrated at this point and here we assume in center of gravity we assume that both are the points so both are points here we assume that external force acting at that point and here we assume that the gravitational force is acting at that point of the body so this is your body this is our uh, g center of gravity this is your c center of mass so we assume that the force is applied at center of mass and here we apply that this body is being pulled by the earth from this point so that's force of gravity x over here so uh, so that suppose it has mass m so at this point we, we write mg downward force fg is first. so if we put equal and opposed force over here then we are able to pick it up so that is what we are doing so here at g this whole uh, means and i'm balancing this cardboard it is at rest so it means the uh, reaction due to this they are equal so it means r is equals to mg so that's the meaning of center of uh, the point center of gravity where whole the it is being pulled this cardboard is being pulled by the earth and from this point okay now uh, is another example so simple here means you are taking the moments uh, about g here so that's your x is at g so obviously any force acting here will rotate it this way any force acted ho over here from a to g will rotate it this way so this direction so same thing you are supposed to do always uh, understand one thing that at axis at g r is equals to zero this is the only thing you need to see so you need to choose the point of x of rotation such that you are cancelling more and more force so here we have uh, means it, it's your choice you can take the x over here also x over here 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 over here you'll get the same answer so we'll take the same uh, summation of forces we get one equation we get now summation of torque we get another equation so if there is uh, x and y separately here we have only uh, the force in y direction so take only y okay and you get two equations and you can find r1 and uh, r2 so that i have uh, taught in taught yesterday so you can t you can see the last lecture lecture number 20 now this ladder this is your ladder and this is this wall is frictionless wall so this frictionless wall the reaction will only be perpendicular to the direction of the wall but here we have rough surface so rough surface so on the rough surface uh, this ladder and this is the rough surface so uh, there will be friction force that is force of friction usually write it as small f but here we are writing it as capital f and this is the normal reaction so we have uh, two forces over here so n and f and the resultant of these two forces n and f is f2 so f2 may lie on the ladder may not lie on the ladder like in this case okay but this is a normal reaction like your normal reaction here perpendicular to the wall and here the normal reaction perpendicular to the surface but here there was no friction because this wall was frictionless but here this is rough surface so we have friction force so you can see that uh, um, we have one two three four forces is the weight so obviously from the center of gravity it is pulled by the uh, so center of gravity here is d point so here at a we have two forces so let we so that is why we take the axis at a okay that is our choice so at a uh, so the rotation force due to n and f will be zero so we'll be left with only two forces so if this is a obviously if you are putting the force over here so it is obviously you know means uh, rotate in this direction and this you are suppose so anywhere from here to here any force in this direction is going to move it in this direction and any force in this direction is going to or, or means any force this uh, means in clockwise direction so this is very simple thing 
but still if you want to use the R and F thing R cross F if you want to use then you can use that thing also so this is uh, for for D point this is your R that's your uh, and what is R perpendicular so this is your line of action okay so always remember that tau is equals to r perpendicular into f and what is this r perpendicular r perpendicular is from the point where force is applied uh, sorry the point where you, you have taken the axis and the line of action so this r is perpendicular distance between axis and line of action so that's your line of action and the this is your axis moving passing through here so that's 0 0.5 that's your r so this torque acting here is uh, 0 0.5 into w and will it be negative or positive so this is r and this is w so r cross f this direction so that's clockwise so it will be negative now this what about this point so again this is your this is your r so r cross f so this is your r r cross f this is your r cross f so it's anti clockwise so this direction will be positive so plus so what about r perpendicular what is r perpendicular here so this is the uh, line of action you have uh, this f1 this is a line of action and this is your axis uh, passing axis passes through a so axis to line of action perpendicular distance so that's your r perpendicular in this case and that is equals to 2 root 2 so this is 3 and this is 1 so this is 2 root 2 so 2 root 2 and it is as it is in equilibrium so net torque is 0 so that's 0 so you get one equation from here and another equation you get uh, here from delta fx and delta fy is equals to zero due to translation equilibrium so delta fx what are the force in x direction so you have the force this uh, f uh, in the positive so this is positive you are taking this this again this is again positive and one more force is acting that is f1 at b and you have one more force at d center of gravity that is weight so this uh, this force you will be uh, along negative so f1 is negative and this downward down is also negative so these forces are along the x-axis so f f minus f1 equals to zero net force along x-axis net force along y-axis also zero what are the force along y-axis so along y-axis you have this n and this w so n minus w is equals to zero so you always know the value of uh, w w is equals to mg you know the mass of the ladder and g is 9.8 so you can find W here and then you, you, you have found N here. So you know N and W. So put the value of W over here and you get F1. And put the value of F1 over here, you get F. So simple students. So now let us start the uh, next topic. So we, had, we have done the revision till now.